Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite creator who's always making helpful videos, Gardner. I'm coming at you again today with another Steam Deck news video because that's where all the money is apparently. No, honestly, it's because the Steam Deck has completely reinvigorated my interest in gaming, let alone Linux gaming. As I've said before, I think the Steam Deck is the future of PC gaming. So that's why I want to talk about all the awesome stuff that has happened over the last week in the world of the Steam Deck. But before we get into this, I want to give a special shout out to Glenn Steen, one of my top tier Singularity members on Patreon. It's because of people like Glenn that I'm able to continue making this show. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help this show grow, you can use the links below to pledge your monthly support. And thank you. All right, first up, let's talk about the two new Steam Deck updates that dropped last week. As some people have already pointed out, there was about a week of silence from Valve as they went on their yearly trip to Hawaii as a company. But they have returned and we have two small updates. According to the changelog, the first update added great on deck carousels to the recommended tab on deck home. It added dead zone visualizers to the controller configurator. It fixed focus issues when entering the library and when going into or out of collections. It added further performance improvements for users with very large Steam accounts. It fixed focus display issues with selecting friends in the invite friends to game dialog after entering in some text filter and list. And then the second update, Valve simply fixed an issue with the home screen not loading properly when in offline mode. It's really great to see Valve back from a well-earned vacation after the successful launch of the Steam Deck. Hopefully we'll see some new features and more fixes on the deck soon. Okay, next up we have the deck reaching number one seller on Steam last week, dethroning Elden Ring and LEGO Star Wars Saga. Elden Ring went four weeks at number one and LEGO Star Wars was number one the week after. The Steam Deck has consistently been number two through all of this though. See, Elden Ring released the same week as the Steam Deck, and Valve was slow to start completing reservations. But the Steam Deck taking its place as number one uh, is actually based on sales revenue and not units sold. And what is unclear here is if the deck took number one because Elden Ring and LEGO Star Wars sales are waning, or if Valve is ramping up the rollout and selling more decks. It might be both, but time will tell. I'm honestly really anxious to see some official sales figures from Valve, but I doubt we'll see them anytime soon. All right, did you hear about this one? Lutris now has a flat pack beta. This is big as currently the Lutris app image on Steam Deck is just broken. Now, the flat pack beta is just that, a beta. It's not yet ready for the general public to use, and it has a few issues, but it's exciting to see nonetheless. If you're not familiar with Lutris, it's a fantastic game manager that helps you manage your games from any source. That includes your digital collections on Humble, GOG, Origin, Ubisoft Connect, and even Epic Game Store. But there are also community-made scripts that help you install certain physical releases. I'm really excited to get some classic games installed on the deck. Who wants to see me install SimCity 3000 Unlimited from the original CD? Get subscribed and leave a comment if you wanna see that video, or if you wanna see more Steam Deck videos like this. We release new videos every Monday and Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern time, sometimes Wednesday too. We're fastly approaching summer and with it, the Steam Deck's official dock. And it seems that the dock got both an upgrade and a name change. Yep, the dock is actually now called the Docking Station, which feels a little more appropriate than simply calling it a dock, since dock implies dropping it into the slot and it automatically connects, sort of like how the Switch does. Instead, the Docking Station has a USB-C cable that you must plug into the deck once you've seated it in the Docking Station. And I'm also now realizing that it's pretty good that they changed the name simply because saying deck dock is pretty silly and hard for a guy like me who stumbles over literally every other word he says. But the docking station also got an upgrade. It was originally listed as having two type A USB 2.0 ports as well as one 3.1 port, but it's now been upgraded so that all USB ports are now 3.1. This is a substantial upgrade for the docking station and a welcome one at that. Okay, let's talk about hardware mods as they're starting to become a real thing in the community. My biggest complaint about the deck was that the Steam and quick access buttons lack any kind of physical feedback. Even something as simple as having these buttons trigger haptic responses on the trackpad would be an improvement, but as it stands, they're mushy and don't feel good at all to press. You can probably see where this is going. Here we see Twitter user Timon Skew replacing the deck's mushy surface mount buttons with a much more tactile feel.
I would really love to upgrade the buttons on my deck, but I'm gonna leave them as is for now. Maybe once I'm more confident with my soldering skills. Great job, Timon. Next, let's talk about a new release for Proton. If you're not familiar, Proton is the underlying toolset that lets Windows games play nice with Linux. Proton is an astoundingly mature technology that has had games like Elden Ring playing better on Linux than they did on their native Windows just a few days after release. And it's not just Elden Ring. Many games perform much better under Linux using Proton than they do on Windows. Well, this new release of Proton brings a bevy of improvements that make a bunch of new games playable. Some of the highlights are Devil May Cry HD Collection, Dragon Quest Builders 2, King of Fighters 13, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Guilty Gear Isuka, Metal Slug 2, 3, and X, Double Dragon Trilogy, and of course, Elden Ring. This new release of Proton also adds fixes and updates for various Proton components. They fixed Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy not displaying anything on the Steam Deck. They added a fix for Microsoft Flight Simulator crashing after a recent game update. They fixed Persona 4 Golden lacking audio in cutscenes, which was a big complaint I've seen in the community. They have fixed Apex Legends sometimes starting minimized on the Steam Deck. And they added updates for DXVK, VKD 3D Proton, and DXVK NV API. Whew, that was a lot to say. <laughs> okay, finally, let's talk about this awesome thing that the Fox did with his Steam Deck. He was able to underclock his screen to 40 Hertz. This is extremely cool. See, screens usually update at a fixed frequency, which means that on the Steam Deck, once every 60th of a second, the screen will update whether or not the game actually has rendered a new frame. What happens here is instead of the screen running at 60 Hertz, or in other words, 60 frames a second, the screen would actually run at 40 Hertz. But why would this matter? Wouldn't more frames be better? Well, as you might've noticed in the quick access menu, you can actually limit the frame rate to 60, 30, or even 15 frames per second. And the more perceptive of you will note that when you divide 60 by 15, that equals four with no remainder. Similarly, 60 divided by 30 is two. So no matter which of these presets the game runs at, the screen can simply multiply a single frame by a fixed integer and everything lines up perfectly with the screen's 60 frames per second. And that's all well and good, but what if your game can't actually achieve a consistent 60 frames per second, but you find it unplayable if you limit it to 30 frames per second? Well, you could cap it at 40, but 60, the screen's refresh rate, divided by 40, the game's frame rate, equals 1.5. So what would that look like? Well, it would be stuttery and uneven. It would look really bad and it would play even worse. That's why the Fox modifying the screen's refresh rate is so cool because suddenly you can play AAA games at a consistent 40 frames per second on the Steam Deck and the screen updates in sync with it. According to Kerry, games play so much better than they do at 30 FPS. But we need to talk about what this is not. This is not variable refresh rate. As opposed to a screen running at a constant refresh rate of 60 hertz, variable refresh rate takes an unstable image source, aka a game, and only updates the screen when there's a new image to be displayed. And this is not what the Fox did. It's worth noting that Carrie's software mod here was actually performed on Windows, but Val's Pierre Lou has said that uh, this feature is actually coming to SteamOS once they can iron out a few small issues. He said, quote, We've been really excited to bring refresh rate switching to deck to deliver smoother frame rate pacing in arbitrary FPS limit scenarios. But the current screen blanking time when switching is a bit much. We've been doing work behind the scenes to improve it. Coming soon. But now it's your turn. Let me know what you think about Valve adding different refresh rates to the deck or any of the stories we talked about in this video. Sound off in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Now, I want to say thanks to my friends on Patreon and my YouTube members who keep this show being excellent. If you enjoyed this video and you believe in the work that I'm doing, consider making a monthly pledge with the links below. And some tiers will even get your name listed over here. But I think that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day and I'll see you guys next time.